This is India over the last 24 hours, another wave of coronavirus seeping through its veins. From Delhi to Mumbai to Kolkata, its spread is vast and for seven days now, a record daily increase in cases. In the western state of Gujarat, it's particularly bad. Hospitals struggling to cope and essential equipment said to be in short supply. Rakesh and his mum both have COVID. Every state, every district, every city, you can find each and every household at least one or two positive cases of coronavirus. And this new strain is attacking like anything. The new strain is attacking straight to the lungs. The person feels like he, is, he or she is asymptomatic, right? But after four or five days, he got storm inside the lungs. Um, Rakesh, can I speak to your mom? Yeah, sure. One minute. <laughs> Time to go to her. <laughs> India's official death toll has surpassed 170,000. Experts say the pace at which new cases are increasing is concerning, with more than 200,000 reported yesterday, the highest daily number so far. More than 1,000 died from the virus in 24 hours for the second day running. This couldn't come at a worse time. The Hindu festival Kummela is attracting millions of people to the banks of the River Ganges. It's triggered a row, with some saying it shouldn't have been allowed to go ahead. A Muslim faith gathering last year was partly blamed for spreading the virus. Narendra Modi is currently fighting an election. Cancelling the Mela wouldn't have done him any favours amongst his conservative Hindu supporters. There were conflicting messages even within government, and the festival went ahead. State government, which is holding the Mela, they are quite adamant uh, in the sense that they don't want to curtail it or cancel it. On the other end, there are few politicians and ministers who believe that, you know, the crowd the size of the crowd is very large and the way this uh, second wave of the pandemic has hit us we should uh, call it off we should curtail it we should curb the movements of people so there is kind of you know um, uh, conflicting or mixed uh, messages some states have imposed night curfews but many indians are still not changing their behavior election campaigning continues large weddings are taking place and shops remain open. Doctors fear the addition of a new strain could be catastrophic. It's a very highly infectious strain, and it's also lethal. So it's both infectious as well as it's lethal. We had not seen uh, COVID cases in the younger population. If I tell you in the first wave, most of the patients were above 30. Hardly we had seen any younger patient population. However, in this way, we have seen clearly young patients getting admitted with COVID. The crematoriums and burial grounds are reported to be working overtime to cope with the high surge of deaths. People we've spoken to believe official figures don't depict the true horror. More than a billion people, and India is facing what some are calling a COVID tsunami battering all corners of its land. Seema Katecha reporting. Well, earlier I spoke with Professor Srinath Reddy, President of the Public Health Foundation of India. I started by asking him to outline the scale of the problem that India is facing right now with COVID-19. Well, we are seeing a rapidly rising epidemic with more than 200,000 cases being reported every day and the numbers are rising each passing day. And uh, we are worried that it might actually cross even 300,000 soon. But also it is spreading very rapidly across the country. Initially, only about four states were considered to be a bit of problem last month. But now virtually every part of India is showing a rise. 
though the numbers are different, but several states are affected and it is possible that almost all of India is going to see a surge soon. And what do you think is driving the surge? What's behind it? Basically, there was a laxity on part of people to observe precautions like wearing masks or uh, avoiding crowding or physical distancing not being followed. And even authorities let large gatherings happen, whether they were for political reasons or religious reasons or social gatherings or cricket tournaments or whatever. And therefore, since uh, the society was very open, the virus had an opportunity to really spread fast. But the arrival of variants, uh, which also had greater speed of progression and greater infectivity, further compounded the situation. Do you blame the politicians? Do you think they took a view which was, oh, we're, we're all right, India's doing well, and they, they took their eye off the ball, or worse? Well, I, I don't think it's entirely the politicians' fault. Scientific arguments of various kinds were also advanced by people who should have possibly known better. And the media, too, welcomed it. The industry welcomed it because they wanted to open up the industry as fast as possible. And therefore, the political decision makers also felt that this was the right moment uh, to give Indian economy a boost by opening up society and uh, ultimately, I think we have paid a collective price for that. Any country that's going through this pandemic knows when it comes to waves, there are lots of variants moving around, but there are reports of a specific variant in India. What do you know about that new Indian variant? When you have a variant which now combines two previously existing mutations, one with higher infectivity and also with a vaccine escape property, then that spells danger. And that is where we are worried about because this is what is contributing to a very severe surge in Maharashtra and is spreading elsewhere too. Indeed, it's not confined only to India now. The US, UK, Singapore, Australia, and South Africa have also reported this double mutant. Now, whether it arose in India or arose elsewhere, we do not know, but it was India that first reported it. Your leader recently called India, referred to India as the pharmacy of the world. You recently exported 60 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Should the pharmacy of the world actually now be just the pharmacy of India and stop exporting those vaccines and start using them more on its own people? Right now, I think the priority is to look at how best we can meet India's needs, not only with the existing two vaccines which have been approved, but also others that are on the anvil, like the Russian vaccine that's also been approved just now. And our Prime Minister Boris Johnson is due to visit India in a couple of weeks' time. He's aiming to get five million more doses of the vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, out of the Serum Institute. Based on what you've just said, do you think that he'll get them? Well, that's for both the governments to negotiate and decide on how much will be given and when it will be given. But I'm sure Indian government also would like to make, keep up its international obligations. Well, we'll see if he gets it. And very good luck to you. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor Reddy. Thank you. Thank you.